Welcome to my review of a stall for Sega Saturn. This is a very, very good platforming game, an action game, side scroller on the Saturn net. I've seen mentioned a few times it's a game by Sega, but it doesn't get a lot of um, attention, and it's really a great game. I thought it was very good, and I, I really enjoyed it. The game has limited continues, so it's the kind of game that you have to practice and learn, which I always recommend using save and load states on an emulator, practicing sections and stages, you know, until you can do them without dying, pretty much. And, um, you know, then it makes it easier to put the game together, since you have limited lives and continues. I made a tutorial for this game as well, I believe, so in that tutorial, I'll link it in the description, and... That will detail um, how long the game took me to beat. I think I, I think I may have documented that, but I don't remember. Because sometimes, this may have been one of those games where I lost some of my recordings and didn't have the, the accurate time completed, but I'm not sure. But yeah, very good game. Basically, you go through the stages as you would in a normal action-style game, and at the end you'll fight your bosses. So this is, this is the first boss fight. This is a very straightforward game with very little, you know, puzzle elements or anything like that. You'll have some platforming and stuff like that, but it's very straightforward as far as just straightforward action for the most part. Now, some of the bosses you're going to learn, you're going to have to learn exactly how to damage them. It's not always clear. So there's a little bit of puzzle element there with some of the bosses figuring out how to damage them and things like that. But nothing too complicated. But it is a challenging game. So if you like platforming challenges, you know, in action games and things like that, you'll, you'll probably enjoy this game. The animation and, and art style is great. The music is very memorable. You know, in line with what you would expect from a Sega game of that time period, obviously. Sega now is not too good, but this was around their prime um, time, you know. But yeah, um, some of the details are a little hazy for me because I haven't beaten this in a few years, so I'm going to be going off memory. But um, you also have this bird helper which will help you reveal certain platforms, you know, platforms and things like that. I think the bird can also attack, if I remember right. You can take a few hits before you die. So you are able to take a few hits, and sometimes you can find um, items that will replenish your health. Probably not during the boss fights, but, you know, during the levels. There's a lot of unique stages, though. And like I said, the animation art style is great. So here you can see some of the platforming, similar to like uh, Mario or Donkey Kong Country where you bounce off the enemies. You know, there is a lot of that. And occasionally, I think if your time starts to get a little bit low, there's this enemy that will show up and try to grab you. You saw me just punch him. I think if you stand around too long, that enemy will try to kill you. But they're usually pretty easy to deal with. This is one of the cooler stages, I thought, where you ride this beast through the water. Very cool art style and fun stage. It has a nice rhythm to it. Once the once it speeds up, you, you have to dodge at kind of a nice rhythm in it. You know, the pacing is nice. It feels good. It's a good stage to play through. If you strike the beast, it will um, propel you upwards really high. So that's one of the things you can do to dodge shit. You also have throws, as you saw, where you can throw the enemies and smack them but yeah this is one of those games that I really never hear about and it's one of the better Sega you know side scrolling games you know that can compete with anything that was on the Genesis that Sega put out I mean it's up there it's not quite at the level of like something like um, Shinobi 3 or you know Gunstar Heroes for me or anything like that I mean those are some of my favorites on the Genesis but this is the kind of game that I would have liked to see a lot more of on the Saturn instead of, you know, these systems at the time really trying to push 3D games and not really focusing on 2D. I mean, this would have been one that would have been cool as a series. And, of course, you know, seeing uh, the Genesis properties, you know, remade on the Saturn, like, you know, new sequels to uh, Shinobi games, Streets of Rage, Sonic, and all that shit. For some reason, Sega didn't really uh, go in that direction back then. But this was one game where they where they made the right choice.
So you got some platforming here. You can see it's a little bit more zoomed out. Some stages will be more zoomed out when there's a lot of platforms. And when the bird has an exclamation mark above it, I believe you have to interact with it in some way by pressing one of the buttons. And I believe that's how you can reveal platforms or, or get it to do something you need it to do. I don't remember all the details, like I said, exactly what the bird was able to do. So I'm remembering some of it as I watch this footage now. But I remember really enjoying this game, and it was a nice challenge, too. It wasn't an easy game, but it's not that hard, either. If you practice with states, you know, you can, you can really learn it. Of course, it can be more challenging if you, you don't use save states, and then you have to restart the game to learn, you know, to get back to where you were and learn um, how to progress. So that'll take longer. But yeah, it was fairly challenging. I would say, you know, it's another moderate difficulty type of game. If it had unlimited continues, then it would, you know, it'd be a little bit too easy, I think. But when you only have limited continues in lives, it makes it a little bit more challenging because you don't want to fuck up as much. Yeah, this is one game that would be cool to see brought back as a series. I mean, Sega has so many properties and, um, you know, characters and things that, that could really benefit by being brought back with modern visuals and, you know, when I say modern visuals, I don't mean make the game 3D or anything like that. I mean, they can have 3D graphics, but I would probably rather have the, a lot of these games in the old side-scrolling style. Similar to that, you know, what was done with Streets of Rage 4 was pretty good recently. I thought that they did a good job with that. Sonic Mania, those were great, those were great um, ways to bring back the characters in the, the old series. And, you know, this would be cool if it got a second chance. I think it would be cool to see another game in this series. I think, you know, they could add more moves. There's a lot that could be added to it, but it's a very cool visual style, gameplay. Everything was really tight. I didn't really have any, any complaints about this game. I mean, I thought it was just a solid, you know, really enjoyable game. I was surprised with how good it was. It doesn't quite have that pacing and flow of the best platforming games out there like Donkey Kong Country or, you know, Super Mario World. I mean, but, you know, how many games can really um, fuck with those games in terms of the pacing and the, uh, the rhythm of movement and everything like that? And this game's not really trying to be that kind of game. It's a different style, but it's a lot of fun. This was one of the hardest um, stages in the game from what I remember. Dodging these feet is a little bit tricky, but the stage itself can be tricky as well because you have um, a lot of enemies and shit moving around. And I remember this part being, you know, this, this stage being pretty tough at parts. So it gives you an idea of the basic game difficulty since this is probably, you know, maybe one of the hardest parts. Though I don't show it for too long. And this was the final boss. And I don't show the full fight. I chop it up, but... um. It was a pretty cool final boss fight. I remember it being fairly challenging from what I remember. But it was a pretty cool final boss fight to conclude the game with. You pick these things up and throw them at the boss. But see, I had to do it partially blind because this emulator would glitch out at certain points. And it would show a blue screen, as you see. So I think that may have made it a little bit more challenging, if I remember right. But it was still playable on the emulator. There's probably better emulators now. So yeah, now you can say I just cut it off. But yeah, great game overall. And I definitely highly recommend the game. If you like platformers, if you like Sega games, this game has that Sega style from that time period with the music, the art style. It all has that Sega feel. When you play it, you'll definitely recognize that it's from Sega. So yeah, I definitely recommend this game. And I give it an 8 out of 10. Thanks for watching.